So this can end now. Make it stop. But <laughs> it doesn't ever yeah, stop. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. stopping. Mm -mm. It's still going. A year after they were shot at a birthday party, two of the survivors are speaking exclusively to 10 News. The shooting at a University City apartment pool last April left one woman dead, six others wounded. 10 News reporter Matt Boone joins us now with a look at how this has really affected their lives. You can see that. <laughs> Vanessa, it's been tough, but we don't often really get to see this. Checking in with the victims one year later. For the two that we spoke to, their physical wounds have largely healed, but they're still working to process the horror they experienced. We were there for part of that journey as they revisited the pool for the first time. When I watch TV and I see gun violence in TV and people get shot somewhere yeah, and they I get just, up I and they're like, like, oh, that. it's fine. No, that's not fine. You On the road to recovery. Healed up pretty well. <laughs> There's still <laughs> some laughter. Right. <laughs> Keon Gold and Callie Seely's lives. The doctor told me to wait about a year before I even get back into the gym. He I was did? Like, I was, Keon. I was back in the gym a week after I got out of the hospital. But, but most days um, are hard. Mentally, there's anguish. There's a deep pain that doesn't go away and it lives yeah. with you every day and you have to carry it around. It's, it's a constant struggle, but daily you just live with it and it's always there. It's like carrying around a backpack with a heavy weight. Sometimes you remember that it's there, but most of the time it's you don't and you just get really tired. Came out this way. way Both were shot here. multiple times. These are the, these are the exit. And while their scars have healed, the memories. Yeah. Did it not feel real to you either? It didn't feel real to me. I, and even in the hospital, I thought I was gonna wake up from some horrible uh, dream. Yeah, I thought, I was like, this is yeah. not, is this a movie? Did I somebody said that it did not seem like it could happen? 10 News has team coverage of the mass shooting from the scene and the hospital where several of the victims are being treated right now. Their reality forever altered last April. Happy birthday, Keon! Keon was hosting his 48th birthday party at his apartment birthday, complex. Keon. Right before the shooting began, Keon says he saw a man lying on a lounge chair by himself, so he went over. It's my birthday. Come have a good time. We, we're all over here. We got food. We got drinks. We got girls. That's exactly what I said. That's when the man, now identified as Peter Sellis, pulled out his gun. I didn't think it was a real threat until he basically raised the gun towards my head. And that was the moment that I realized that I should have done something right before that. And that's the biggest thing that bothered me and bothers me to this day. The only thing he could do was raise his arm. I thought the bullet went through my arm and went in my head. That was like, but I was like surprised that I was still alive. Miraculously, his arm bone stopped the bullet. Callie was shot in the arm and the breast. And I was like, am I gonna die? Cause it's what you think when you get shot in the chest. <laughs> Police eventually shot and killed Celis after a shootout. In total, seven people were shot, including Monique Clark, who died. This picture taken just minutes before she was shot. And I would gladly give my life up so she can be here because she has three little kids. And now they lost their mother. One small part of their healing happened as our cameras were rolling. Oh, I had somebody carry me and then drop me down here. Keon, who still lives in the La Jolla Crossroads apartments, took us to the place he'd been avoiding. This is the first time I've been back here since it happened. Me too. And I live here. He and Callie took it in calmly. Yeah, it's surreal. It's where I almost lost my life. The memories are being heard about five to six gunshots and now people are screaming. Flooding back. But I ran out and I, heard, I kept hearing the shots, pow, 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 pow. And I'm like, he's after me. And I ran up that way. The day still raw. I think it's a matter of time. Because as time passed, it seems to, you know, the harshness of it seems to ebb. It, it, it will probably take, it's something that you, we will never forget or never. I feel like it's gotten harsher. Yeah. Especially like this last week. I think it's probably because the anniversary is coming up. You probably, so. It's probably at the forefront of your mind. <clears throat> it's like an impending doom is going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. And it's been scary. Keon says he's been diagnosed with PTSD and is now in a trauma study at UCSD. It's an eight week uh, study that they're doing uh, maybe three times a week for two hours a day. As for his birthday, they do plan on having a get together, but not just to celebrate his life anymore, but to celebrate 
all of their lives. You know, we will mourn, but for us, we will celebrate as well because, you know, we made it through and we're getting better at it. That birthday is certainly taking on a different tone this year. Kian also mentioned that Monique Clark's family plans to release doves over the ocean in her honor tomorrow. Matt Boone, 10 News. Long